Hey guys, Benji Lewis here with Kansas City Hardscapes. Just wanted to go over a, a, a quick video on, um, you know, we're kind of on this series of different materials and different uh, aspects of hardscape projects and uh, pros and cons of each one of them. So today we're going to tackle one that comes up pretty often, which is uh, covered structures versus pergolas. So I know that they are not... Um, yeah, they're no different than like a fire pit in a fireplace, right? They're not anywhere near the same thing, but people go back and forth between them um, during their design process and budgeting process and try to think about the pros and cons. So instead of um, having to do that each and every time, I thought I'd just go ahead and make a video as to uh, the benefits of each and the, and the um, shortfalls of each, right? So I'll start with the, well, let's start with pergolas. So pergolas typically, um, the, the nice part about each of these features is that they give it a vertical element, right? So sometimes if it's just a flat patio with a 20 inch tall fire pit on it, um, it does sometimes get a little boring. Now throw a pergola over it and it gets a little vertical feature. So now, now you could have a ceiling fan that goes in there. You could have string lights to, to, um, drape across. So there's different things you can put sunshades on one side you know if the sun always comes out of the east and um or is always setting you know in the west and, and your house faces that way well you can put a sunshade on on the end of it and bring that down at night and, and give yourself some cover until the sun goes down so um so there's some nice features to to just having um nice benefits to having a vertical feature um on your outdoor living space now um the main benefit that people like about pergolas is that they're typically a quarter of the price of a covered structure, right? When I say covered structure, I mean you want an outdoor patio that is fully covered with roofing, shingles, gutters, everything. Like you can go out and stand in the rain and and watch the uh, Chiefs game. So, um how often that probably comes up is is when would one would be one of my main questions right is how often do you really want to go out in the middle of a rainstorm and and watch something and two um how big of a covered structure do you need to actually be able to go out and sit and not get rain coming blowing in um on you kind of thing so um so uh, th th those are all things to take into consideration so the nice part to remember about pergolas is that it gives you that that vertical feature and you still get sun coverage. So, and, and let me explain that, is that old ways, or, or even there's a lot of guys out there still doing pergolas where they have the rafters and, the, and the joists that are a foot to 18 inches apart and that's where it stops. So you have these big, right, if you look at a two foot section of it, I mean, the coverage can't be 10%, 15% at most of sun coverage. It's not exactly sun coverage. It's, that's barely um, blocking anything out. It's mostly there just to be pretty. Well, what we do is we take that, not just the first layer, you know, and the second layer across in it is the, so we'll put a third layer that has one by fours, right? And we can keep those, oh, an inch apart. Some people like them two or three inches or four inches apart. And so now we've got a lot of coverage. I mean, especially at an inch, an inch apart, and then the other rafters coming uh, the opposite way. I mean, they say you're getting 85% sun coverage. I think that's a little high, but I'll call it 70% sun coverage. So you're still letting the light through and the sun through a little bit, but you're you're not letting very much of it through. Now, the customer can decide how wide they want those spaced apart. We are typically gonna do them, you know, an inch and a half. Um, we'll typically use a little piece of, of two by four, which is not two inches as, as you guys probably know. So inch and three quarter, right? That we're gonna keep those apart. Um, tends to work pretty well uh, to give you a lot of the coverage that you want, especially, especially in the afternoon hours, right? When you might wanna be out there for a lunch on a Saturday or Sunday and, and you can be out there and, and it's really, it doesn't seem like it'd be that big a deal, but it is. Um, the temperature underneath the pergola sure is a whole lot less when the sun is not beating down on you. So, so it, it is doing its job there, and you're doing it for, you know, I mean, a large covered structure. You know, typically is going to be 
fourteen to twenty five thousand dollars. Pergolas are started about thirty two hundred, you know, for us for a small one. Average ones are probably about around five thousand. So yeah, for a quarter of the price, you're getting a lot of what can happen. Now, can you have a TV that stays out underneath your pergola all year long? No, that's a benefit of a covered structure, right? We do both. We we put it in covered structures. And the benefit is that you do have that, right? You can put a TV out there. You can finish off one side of it where it has a wall, right? And you post your TV on it. The outlets are behind it. Everything's run behind it. There's no wires exposed. There's no nothing. It looks really clean. It's really nice. And, and that can kind of stay out there all year, right? I mean, you still have to have an outdoor TV, which is really expensive and because there's still moisture and, and all those things that can creep into a regular TV. So, you know, there, there's some questions there on, on what you do. Do you buy a $300 TV on Amazon or do you go and get a $1,500 outdoor TV, you know, that's specifically made for that. But, but, but there's more of that that you can do, right? I mean, you can have heaters installed in the ceiling. You can have, uh, you know, lights installed in the ceiling. You don't just have to have the string lights, you know, that are coming across. Um, so you do get, it, it's a fancier finished option. Um, it just comes down to the price point, right? Like, so like, everything in hardscapes and mostly everything in life, right? If you really want the nicer piece, um, it, it does cost for that because now we're getting into load bearing of, you know, can it handle snow when it's on it? Can it handle anything on it, right? So it has to have an actual roof with rafters and, and shingles and, and gutters and where, where does that rain go to? As opposed to a pergola has no load bearing, right? Everything goes through leaves and snow and you name it. And we don't have to worry about that and rain just goes right through it and washes off the patio. Um, so a lot of that is easier and cheaper. Now we typically, we probably install uh, probably 10 to 1 pergolas to covered structures. Um, mostly I think for the price point, right? You can have a $5,000 pergola. Um, is a whole lot easier for most people to stomach instead of having a, a $19,000 covered structure um, that is really nice, but still, you know, even a 16 by 16 covered structure, you can't exactly sit out in a rainstorm and, and watch, watch a Royals game at night without, you know, every time the wind kicks up going, whoa, whoa, man, that is, <laughs> I'm still getting wet, right? There's a spot that's about three by six in the middle of it that you're not gonna get hit, but minus that, um, you're still getting you're still getting wet, but you're it's not getting as wet, right? You can have furniture underneath there that doesn't get as wet. And if you want to put an outdoor kitchen underneath that covered structure, you could grill out there and and not get wet. Where a pergola does not give you that. Now, I like them both. Um, I'm actually I used to not be a fan of pergolas, and then I became a big fan of them. So now that's the part that that I'm on unless you step up to like a 30 by 30 cover structure, then I really like those because now that this is this outdoor room that is covered and you can be out, and, you know, watching anything and doing anything at any point and, and really have no worries about the outdoor weather. Um, if it starts to rain or do anything, you can sit in the middle and still have a 15 by 15 area in the middle of the couches and chairs and everything. And everybody's sitting around and there's a fireplace on one end of it, but now you're starting getting getting into like outdoor, you know, additions, and and the prices of those um, start to get really pricey. But those are those are the best, of course, right? Because they're the most expensive. But for the average person that comes into our business and is looking for an outdoor area, a pergola a lot of times makes a lot of sense because um, you get the vertical feature. You can put the string lights that a lot of uh, a lot of wives. Um, tend to like nowadays it's you know all the latest rage on Pinterest and, and everywhere online to put those up um, you can hang uh, ceiling fans to have, have some nice breeze um, and, and it just looks nice it gives it gives the whole patio a nice look without spending fifteen to twenty thousand dollars on a, on a covered structure so um, so that's kind of some information about uh, pergolas versus outdoor uh, structures and the benefits and and, um, and downfalls of each one of those. If you have any more questions, give us a call anytime. Uh, check us out on our website, kansascityhardscapes.com, and we'll talk to you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.